Welcome to the Green Room, where we deconstruct the themes of your favorite entertainment. In this episode, we explore Moon Knight Thought Stream Review, Episode 2. So let's get into it. Spoilers ahead. Greetings, greetings, greetings to all of you listening in the Green Room Peanut Gallery. Uh, let's jump right into this episode. This this show continues its very cinematic approach. Um, picks up to where the other episode left off. But it really is building on this character and what's going on. And it's really good pacing. So as we start the show, Steven, uh, excuse me, Steven wakes up as if he dreamed all the events that happened in the museum of changing into Moon Knight and beating down uh, the Jackal. And so when he gets to work, he sees that, you know, yellow tape is being put up and there's some issues and he goes and asks the security person, you know, uh, what's going on. And they say, well, we think a, a pipe busted or something he says well have you have you watched the security cameras he says no not yet and, he's, and I was just about to go do that so Steven uh, goes with him to watch the security footage, uh, footage and he's all like let me warn you you're going to you know see something this you're going to see something that's going to blow your mind on this uh, security feed but uh, when they get to the security feed and start watching it, all he can see is basically Steven running around the museum like a crazy person and going into the bathroom and things flying out of the bathroom. And then when he, when on the footage, when Steven walks out the bathroom, which it actually ends up being Mark, um, and he's not in his moonlight costume but uh steven dash mark looks right at the security camera and the security guard is kind of like you know what what's going on and and steven is like that's not me and so it's painting this picture of to everyone else right steven just he looks like he's really having a breakdown and he's just crazy and that's kind of what happened when he goes in and and talks to um, the museum. Uh, I don't know if they're HR or the authority. And they say, well, we're not going to press charges, uh, but they would like to uh, recommend a doctor for Stephen. And he is uh, unfortunately forced to to resign. Uh, from his position at the museum because they're not going to just let him come through and, you know, uh, by their perception, tear up things without um, any consequences at all. So he loses his job. And so he goes and sits down to, um, I guess it's his only friend, and it's the the man um, in the statue who poses as the statue and who just doesn't move. And he starts talking to the man about, you know, his situation and what he should do. And I thought to myself, like, man, this is sad. Like this guy is going through something he doesn't understand. And not only does he not understand what's going on. But the perception of everyone else is misinformed because of or what everyone else thinks is going on with him is misinformed because of their perception of Stephen's actions. And the only person he really has to talk about it with is somebody who doesn't say anything back, who just sits there literally as a statue. And it really just made me think that like sometimes when folks are going through stuff, sometimes they just need to talk and and need somebody to talk to. And it's not always um, a matter of having somebody say something back, but they just need to get their their thoughts out.
into the world and hear them so that they can decide to do what's next. So I thought this was an interesting commentary about um, therapy and the need to get your thoughts out and and your emotions out um, in some form that will allow you to clear your head and proceed to the next step. And sure enough, after this, you know, one sided conversation, uh, he decides to um, head over to a storage facility. And so when he gets to the storage facility and he goes through this whole routine, well, you know, um, you know, my name is uh, Steven, uh, but I might be uh, under Mark. No, you know, no surname, just Mark. And the guy's like, oh, no, no, I know who you are. I never forget a face number 43. And so the attendant takes him to um, storage uh, locker number 43. And he gets in there and there's basically it's like a, you know, like a studio room. Basically, there is a cot in there and some provisions and then he finds a gun a bunch of money um mark specter's passport and the golden scarab compass and so he's starting to realize like wow this stuff is real and there's this other um person with my face uh that is existing in the world and has a whole life um, that is, you know, walking around, apparently a dangerous person. And so uh, Mark starts speaking to Stephen through his reflection and telling him that telling Stephen that Mark or they, uh, they that Mark is an avatar of Kanchu, the Egyptian god of the moon, and he serves justice. And Mark wants the body from Stephen uh, so that he can continue on whatever his work is that he's doing for Kanchu. And so Stephen just starts freaking out and uh, he starts to leave the storage facility and it becomes kind of like this nightmare scene from a horror movie as Kanchu is kind of approaching him. And I have to say this, this Kanchu, you know, um, deity is just harassing the heck out of Steven and we find out later in the episode why it's going down like this but of course you know seeing Kanchu like this only drives Steven even more into erratic behavior and he goes outside and he starts um, he trips and falls into the street and I'm thinking like okay so this is one of those scenes where he almost gets hit by a car but he won't because you know they're not going to have their main character get ran over by a car but in a kind of twist to this is that when he falls into the street um, he falls in front of a motorbike with a woman on it and this woman knows who he is only she calls him mark and her name is layla and this is apparently the same woman who was on the phone uh, when Stephen found the burner phone and called it. And there was a woman on the phone in episode one saying, oh, my gosh, what happened to you? It's been months. Where are you? What's going on? That's that's who this was. This was Layla on the other end of the phone. And so uh, she ends up he or uh, Stephen ends up getting on the bike with Layla and you know they do this kind of funny routine where he doesn't know uh, where to grab her or, or or how to hold her on this bike and uh, she then drops this bomb on him and says that sh she's his wife or Mark's wife and she is uh she is kind of like not feeling this behavior and accent that she's seeing Mark put on. So apparently 
Uh, Layla is just as much in the dark about um, Stephen Dash Mark or these two personalities within one body as just as much as Stephen is. And so they end up going back to Stephen's place where um, she comes in and I guess she's starting to, she's looking around and she's kind of like, so this is your flat. And he's like, no, this is my mom's flat. I'm here by myself. And because she started to get this like perception that um, her husband, Mark, just wanted to live life by himself. Uh, but Stephen is basically saying, no, this is kind of my life and where it is. And, you know, once again, um, uh, Steven's mom mom comes up and I'm like where is this woman you know he he hasn't talked to her apparently this flat belongs to her but she's nowhere to be seen so anyway Layla goes through and she picks up a book of French poetry and starts reading in French and um, Steven says you know that's my my favorite poet and um, Layla says, no, that's my favorite poet. And uh, then she goes and she starts um, interpreting some hieroglyphics from a book. And Stephen is impressed. And uh, Layla kind of has this look on his face like, why are you acting like you don't know that I know these things? And so she says, you know, basically she gives him divorce papers. And... It's like, well, if you're if if you want to, you know, separate from me so bad, let's do this. And Stephen is like, I would never divorce you. You know, he doesn't. So clearly he's, um, um, you know, smitten with Layla and um, he's he's you can tell he's starting to piece together things, but he really hasn't truly accepted what's going on. Um, and he's pieced together enough to know that he is um, sometimes this Mark person. And I guess this Mark person is married to Layla. And he won't sign these papers on uh, behalf of Mark for Layla. Because I think he's, he's feeling Layla and wants to stay with her. And so he tries to show Layla the scarab. And Mark is telling him, no, don't show it to her. Um, you're just going to put her in danger from, you know, that that uh, Amit uh, cult, you know, the folks with the scale tattoos. And but she starts going through the bag and, and she sees the scarab anyway. And she's kind of like. Oh, so you've, you, you have it, you've had it all this time. And after everything we've done through, you've had it in a, in a gym bag and you know, what's going on. And, uh, she just seems like really upset because she hasn't quite understood that Steven is not the man that, um, she's married to and she thinks he is. And so she starts asking him if he really just can't remember their life together uh, and any details of it. And then uh, there's a knock on the door and it turns out to be the authorities, the, the police or something. And of course, Stephen assumes that they're there to pick him up for what happened at the museum. And um, he's explaining and stuff and the, the authorities kind of barge into his house and I was like, oh, this is clearly not in the United States because, there, you know, there's no warrant. Um, but, you know, that may be just, you know, an artistic choice as well. And um, it's Layla has hidden, you know, she's gone out the w window and hidden um, away from the authorities. And she has the the scare rope with her. So these authorities, these uh police find Mark's, Mark Spector's passport and accuses Stephen of being Mark um, and, uh, and being, him, uh, being a thief and a con artist, basically. And so they arrest him and put him in the back of the car. 
And so uh, we get a little bit of exposition while Stephen is sitting in the back of the car from Mark. And uh, Mark is basically uh, saying that, you know, um, uh, no, I'm sorry. They, we get some ex exposition from the police officers saying that Mark shot an Egyptologist in the back of the head. And, you know, Stephen just like can't believe this. And, you know, uh, Mark is just sort of kind of um, coming in and out of his consciousness and the reflection. And so when they stop, they don't stop at the police station. And Stephen was like, well, I thought you would take me to the police station. And there's a, a moment where a little girl, um, you know, the bounces a ball against the, the car or something. And you see on her arm is the scale tattoo. And I think to myself, oh, here we go. You know, these police are clearly part of this uh, scale, this Amic cult, you know, from this cult leader who... Um, I finally found out later his name is Arthur and sure enough, uh, they, uh, they, uh, uh, the, the cult leader does show up and, and named Arthur and starts talking to him and tells Stephen uh, starts telling him some of the, the situation. And right before this happens, um, Mark is still trying to tell, tell uh, Stephen to, to surrender control and talk to him. And then Kanchu is also talking to Stephen. And he's, Kanchu is telling Stephen to uh, break Arthur, the cult leaders, break his windpipe and kill him. So, you know, poor Stephen, he has basically two voices in his head at this point, you know, trying to get him to follow their agenda. And so Arthur, the cult leader, starts showing Stephen around this neighborhood that apparently the whole cult lives in as a community and starts talking about how, you know, they're well fed and taken care of and that that part of the community used to be blighted and and crime and this kind of thing. And they live in harmony. Um, and this whole time, Kanchu keeps getting to get involved. But the cult leader, Arthur, keeps shrugging it off because he I guess he can tell from Stephen's reactions that Kanchu is um, really trying to talk to him and he's telling you no you can ignore him you don't have to do what Kanchu says and Kanchu, uh, uh, Arthur reveals that he was once the avatar of Kanchu himself and he says that Kanchu passes ju judgment justice rather after the fact while Amit is more proactive and he explains that the Scarif is a compass to a missed temple to, I guess, release her into the world. And so there is a philosophical conversation between Stephen and Arthur about justice and basically saying that um, uh, uh, Matt, uh, uh, Amit is talking about harming people and judging them before they've actually accomplished any crimes. And even children, are they judged before they've actually accomplished any any crimes? And Arthur basically just says, you know, that um, he kind of sums it up that, you know, um, uh, um, I guess he, he puts this trust in, in a man to know who is going to do what and to stop it beforehand. And so it's a it's a, a fascinating conversation about um, justice and judgment and being proactive versus reactive and and what is the right way to do things because I guess uh, Arthur stopped being the avatar of Kanchu because Kanchu uh, dealt out his brand of justice after the fact where Amit was more proactive 
but this doesn't seem to to resonate very well with Stephen. And so uh, to he shows Stephen the cane that he has and and he asks him what he if he knows what it is and he says that you know the cane is just a fraction of the power of a mint and he says he'll use this cane to um, make Stephen um, tell him where the scarab is and so as he's threatening him Layla shows up with the scarab and says you know I have the scarab and she tells Stephen to summon the suit as the two of them uh, run away from Arthur and these cult folks and uh, Arthur then uses the cane to summon another jackal like um, the one that was in the Stephen or I'm sorry the one that was uh, in the museum that uh, attack Stephen and uh, Stephen is uh, they get in this room and uh, the you know uh, Layla is telling Stephen to summon the suit and whatever and, and Stephen's like I can't I don't know how I don't you know I can't do this and she's like it's okay it's okay she starts being more understanding as she I guess she starts to really accept that that Stephen Stephen and Mark just aren't the same person but as the the jackal burst into the room right and apparently starts just um, um, coming for Stephen but Layla doesn't see the jackal so you know this is even more um, a commentary on mental illness because not only now does Stephen have these two voices in his head but now he's seeing creatures that are attacking him that nobody else can see and so the jackal uh, pounces on him and they fall through a window and he I, he just says to himself to, you know summon the suit and so he does he summons a suit but it's this very it's not like the suit that he wore with the cape and everything and all the Egyptian hieroglyphs and that kind of thing that he wore in the museum but it was a, like a, a regular suit still all white but just like a very dapper kind of suit and so this is apparently Stephen actually Stephen's version of the Moon Knight suit which is really interesting that the different personalities have different uh, types of suit suits and Mark is you know continuing trying to get Stephen to relinquish control of their body to him and he's like making fun of this suit like you know what kind of suit is this this isn't a suit for you know um, fighting off anything and he's like well you know you, you, everyone was telling me to to summon a suit and that's I guess that's what he thought of so I guess the suit is dependent on the mind and personality of the person who or the personality who's in control and who summons it so Layla is watching as the jackal tries to mangle Stephen and she's finally able to see the jackal when she attacks or where she thinks it is with some shards of glass and so Stephen starts to really embrace this power that he has and starts fighting the jackal but there's all these people on the street who are basically just seeing this guy in a completely white suit and mask looking very dapper fighting the air so you know looking like a crazy person and he gets up, gets pretty beat up by the jackal uh, before he finally realizes that you know he may have the suit and he may be starting to accept what's really going on but he doesn't have the same skills of Mark so he decides to relinquish control to Mark of their body and the suit changes to um, the same suit he was wearing in the Night of Museum and the more you know um, uh, the more um, uh, I would say stereotypical hero 
uh, superhero type of Moon Knight suit. And so uh, Moon Knight starts, you know, racing across the rooftops with the jackal in pursuit. And he manages to destroy the jackal on the top of, on a rooftop and, and impales this jackal. This really cool scene. And uh, finds out that uh, Mark, because this is Mark now in control of the bo a body, but that the scarab was dropped, which uh, Arthur then um, gets in possession of because some some vagrant guy picks up the scarab and Arthur is kind of like, oh, I can give you food. I can give you clothing. I can give you shelter. I can give you all these things, but, but I can't give you the scarab. And I think in the process, he judges him too, because the guy ends up, ends up, you know, um, um, being killed like the woman in the first episode and, and disintegrating very Thanos style. And so, uh, Mark is kind of in control now and Steven is talking to Mark now from inside Mark's head and through the reflection and, uh, Mark is now he's taken off his suit. So he just looks like, you know, um, Steven dash Mark Oscar Isaac as a person. Uh, but they're having a conversation about what it's like because Steven wants the body back and wants to be back in control again. But Mark is like, no, I won't let you. And they have this conversation about their situation where Mark reveals that, you know, his servitude to Conchu is a debt that he has to pay. And uh, Stephen and Mark argue with each other about who they are and about Layla. And so then Conchu kind of gets in the mix and he arrives to chastise Mark who is American, by the way. So this accent that, uh, that Mark had, or I'm sorry, that Stephen had is completely gone. And so he's just talking with an American accent now. And, um, it was, a it was a cockney kind of accent that he had. Um, I got to, uh, talk to, um, someone shout out to, uh, the blur blurred without fear his youtube channel go check him out he's he's got uh the best comic channel on youtube um but we were in blur without fears live chat and um there's um uh, one of the members is actually from the uk from the area and i asked him about the accent of the show and was it you know was it accurate and he said oh it's horrible it's you know it's horrible and um i said i, I figured it was probably bad to somebody um from the area and it is a you know an east london um cockney kind of accent but it's just not a very good one um to an actual uh, uh british ears and the same way that you know, in movies and show when someone put on this kind of Texas country accent, I'm usually like, yeah, most people I know from Texas, uh, they don't talk like that. So um, it was interesting to, you know, have that conversation uh, about these accents and actors and all that kind of thing. And how, you know, as as an American, you know, we we just it sounds great to me. So anyway, um Kancho is uh, telling Mark that the cult leader, Arthur, has the scarab and that they need to go. And Mark is like, to where? And Kancho is like, where do you think? And we close out with Mark being transported to uh, this room. And you can tell from the decorations kind of what comes next, but he goes to the window and he opens this curtains and it's just this um, gorgeous skyline of the pyramids of Giza um, and uh, Cairo, Egypt. And that's where the episode closed. So this was another solid episode. Um, I've accepted the pacing of the show um, because it is, you know, 
uh, it's really quality. It's very quality work. The action scenes are quality. The character development is quality. Um, the reveals are are just coming out uh, really quality, and uh, it's really drawing me into the story. So it'll be interesting to me. I still want to find out, you know, how did Mark, you know, who is the actual original owner of the bar uh, of this body is it mark specter or is it steven you know is steven a personality that was created in order to throw folks off the trail and protect layla um or is mark kind of like it's that's that's the part that's still kind of a big question to me it's like how did this mark personality get involved with Kanchu? in the first place and how when how and why was there a split of personalities to create one named mark who's american and one named stephen who is uh from the uk um but uh yeah this is a great episode and i'm sure there's lots of uh, interesting details and stuff uh, in the episode so uh, please uh, put stuff in the comments and join the conversation and uh, let's talk next episode let's end things right there thumbs up comment subscribe and turn on notifications to get more videos like this thank you for listening and take care